All right, we're here with Super Mario. Uh, my name is Brian Asano. I'm a Texas team lead for the Texas Department. Uh, we're the Diagnostic Hotline, and we're here at SEMA 2023. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just a tech slash content creator. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, so Super Mario does YouTube videos, but we thought it'd be a great, uh, great opportunity to see what's going on. So let's get to it. <laughs> So, um, like market trends, what are you seeing? So, uh, I think your shop's in Florida, right? Yeah, we're in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We're a Euro shop, so we see a lot of the, you know, Rolls Royce, Bentleys, uh, Mercedes, BMWs, and whatnot. And we're seeing a lot of module heavy vehicles. We're seeing like 80 modules in a car. And can't help but think, like, who asked for all this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what we're seeing with the market trends. Um, so so everything's pushing more towards just modules, 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 electronification. And I get it, you know, it's I say who asked for all this, but we know that ADAS, how can ADAS function if there's not all these modules controlling these things? That's why ADAS really takes off to that level where it's going to be truly self-driving. Yeah. It's because of all those modules. Yeah, that makes sense. So how are you guys keeping up in the shop with, uh, with ADAS programming? Training, 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 training. training. I can't stress it enough. Uh, you either learn it the hard way or learn it the easy way. The hard way is in the shop, the easy way is in the class. So yeah. go to class. That's how you That's how you keep up. And there's so much to keep up with as well. But uh, ADAS is truly at the forefront of the technology that we're dealing with all the time. So training is the best way. And then I would also say utilize that training as fast as you can because it's a use it or lose it type deal, Yeah, in my opinion. Um, now with the, the ADAS stuff, uh, have you seen our um, ADAS quick reference stuff? Oh, yeah. Yeah, right from I our see website. it all the time. I, as soon as it came up, I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I looked into it. It's, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah, to what use. it does is it's, it's a quick hit, right? right. We, we have the information. It just brings you straight to, hey, right. this yeah, exactly. this, right? And yeah, it, it gives sure you helps. the, it's kind of like the maintenance schedules, right? It's, it's got, yeah. here's what this car needs. Well, I love it. This kind of tells you this is what this car needs for uh, ADAS stuff. I'm all for it. I like to see that, that right side of the screen grow. Yeah. You know, the ground, the ground locations and all that stuff, the TSVs. Yeah. You know, I like this. Once that ADAS thing came out, I was like, that's pretty cool. So, yeah, we have a pretty robust search feature at the top right there the, with that, above the ADAS quick reference yeah. stuff. Oh, have, yeah. Have you had to get a chance to use that? Oh, plenty. I mean, that's that's actually what I use the most. For the most part, I'm using that search function. Sure, you got to know what you're looking for, right? So, like, I, you know, I'm, I'm always looking at firing orders, number one cylinder. But some people don't know what to type or where to look for this stuff. So, um, once you get that groove going, it's pretty easy to use. And um, I, I always like to see that that right side grow. When I saw the, the whole ADAS uh, reference link, yep. uh, it was surprising. It was pretty cool. And usually when I when I do something, I usually don't look up stuff like by clicking one by one. There are some things that I do, but usually I'm using the search feature. Let's say for like a misfire or something, I put a 300 Then I would pull up the code and then see if the TSB, the corresponding yep. TSB shows up. So it's pretty, so that, pretty that's a great tip uh, for, for all the viewers here. Using the search function is a global search. So if you look up a misfire code, it's not going to look up just the pinpoint test for the misfire. It's going to look up, are there any TSBs for that with that misfire code? Right. Are there any special service messages? Are there in a community post? There's a bunch of other uh, subscribers that have said, hey, I've seen this code and you know we've chimed in and we have confirmed fixes. Uh, find a fixed data. You know, if, uh, if we have data saying, hey, with that code, this is how many times we've seen this kind of stuff going on. All of that's going to show up in our global search. So definitely utilize a robust search feature and that'll really help you guys out. Yeah, it's 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 a no brainer. I mean, to to navigate it, it's, it's not it's not like it's hard to navigate, but searching it is it really streamlines the whole process. I, I love to use it all the time. So I'm, I'm a technician at a shop. You guys see much more data, much more OE information. You guys are more in contact with OEs than we are, obviously. What do you see coming down the pipeline? What, is it electric? Is it hydrogen? Is it ADAS? Is it static, dynamic calibrations? That's a great question. You know, we do see a lot of different vehicles because, you know, we're nationwide, Canada, Mexico, uh, Puerto Rico. For the tech assist side, you know, we're seeing a lot more on the EV front. You know, uh, electric vehicles, um, you're seeing a lot more stations come in and then also uh, shops wanting to be able to service these. Right. right. So, so we're getting a lot of service calls on on EV vehicles. Hydrogen hasn't really taken off. Uh, propane, as we know, kind of fell off. But yeah, I think that the future is probably going towards the EV world. You know, Teslas they came in originally, but uh, we're seeing some new ones. You know, Rivian and, and some of these other brands coming in the market. Um, and I think the infrastructure is pushing that way. You know, the nation. So, 
So I think we're going to see a lot more of that, the EV stuff. And do you see uh, the static versus the dynamic? You know, I, I've always said that I think that dynamic will take over. And, you know, I got a lot of pushback and I, I get why. Yeah. But where do you see us headed? Um, I really think the market's going to dynamic. The reason being is just shops aren't equipped to do the static. Every shop would have to have targets, a specialized space, lighting, right. all of that. And some of these dealerships, how are you going to actually have a manufactured dealership and say, well, I can't even service this vehicle? Say Ford, for example, right? You can't bring a Ford to a Ford dealer and they say, well, we can't do it. work on a Ford. Right. right? So, so I think that's why the market's kind of going to go towards a dynamic. So I think your, your prediction was right. Um, you know, I've seen many of the manufacturers go from static to dynamic and they're staying with dynamic so far. And then some would argue, though, that the road conditions and whatnot, you know, weather conditions and, you know, because, yeah, I, you're I, right. I thought that the dynamic, the dynamic was the way to go. But then you hear people argue and say, not argue, but like they do come up with very valid objections as to road conditions, uh, signages, or maybe even what Tesla is doing. They, what if it's just going to be all cameras eventually? Yeah. Where do you see that happen? Where, where do you see us So going I can tell you that the market's probably going to stay with dynamic. You are going to run into certain vehicles where, yeah, it's going to take a lot longer. So think about like permanent codes came out, right? Yeah. And so we got these where scan tool can't even clear them. You're either replacing the module or you're driving this thing. And if you're not in the right road conditions to do a drive cycle, it's not clearing the code. Right. So I think it's going to be the same. It's the same boat as that. It's either we're releasing the vehicle i've seen some shops in small towns that say hey well this has got a permanent code it's fixed i tell my customers you know drive the vehicle for a week it's supposed to clear itself out because we fixed the vehicle but it's a permanent code we may have to do that say hey we've repaired your your collision system but you're gonna have to drive this thing and if it doesn't clear within a week then come back and we'll try to drive it some more there's so much going on with the new market it, it's really hard to say where it's gonna go but i can tell you just from market trends, most of the manufacturers are going from static to dynamic. Yeah. So I think your prediction was right there. What about cameras? Are they going to take over? Or is it's Tesla going to just say. slam down the proprietary, you know, red tape? Thing? So, I mean, it's not just Tesla too, like the, the Google um, out self-driving. And there's a couple other companies that are doing self-driving cars and they're moving a lot towards LiDAR now. So they, they do a conjunction, LiDAR um, and uh, the cameras. I think the cameras are always going to be there, but there are so many limitations with the cameras. Maybe a redundancy, right? Yeah. Because and I think that's what it's going to be is anytime you have something automated, so automated braking, right, for a sure. collision system, but we're going more towards autonomous vehicles, right? right? And everything's about redundancy because if they're not reliable, who's going to want to, who's going to trust their yeah. lives with them, right? Exactly. And so, so I think cameras aren't going to go anywhere, but there are a lot of limitations with them because it's foggy. Right. Low light conditions. Or the condensation. Uh, it might condens be heaters yeah, or condensation. Too. Um, I can tell you, uh, I personally drive a, a 2019 Fusion, and it's got, got the same kind of stuff. It's got a radar in the front. It's got the camera, all of that stuff. And um, on really stormy days, it'll say uh, collision system uh, inactive. Yeah. 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 And it's just, hey, the camera's picking up too much. There's too much water coming in the front, and it's throwing the radar off. And so it, it just disables the system. So, so they're, they're always going to have some type of backup, you know, cameras, LIDAR, radar, whatever it's going to be. There's another market trend that we've seen is uh, scan tool diagnostics. So um, as you know, a lot of the pinpoint tests were in the workshop manual. So, hey, pinpoint test A, B, C, or one, two, three, or whatever. Right. And here's your steps. Well, when it's scan tool diagnostics, there's not a pinpoint test anymore. It's built into the scan tool. Sure. So That's now true. the manufacturers don't have some pinpoint tests. So that's another market trend that we're seeing as well is where it's becoming proprietary to their scan tool. That changes and everything. That right? does. It's not just a publication. So the as an independent it's, shop. It's technology. Yeah. As an independent shop, how do you keep up with that, right? Uh, you know, if it goes to scan tool diagnostics and you have to have the OE tool for you, say you service a lot of you know luxury cars and or you even if you do everything, right? Is and that, that going to change to where, okay, we do just these luxury brands or i mean are you going to have eight different oe scan tools right yeah. so so i mean it's really tough I mean, we're, we're really forcing our hand on this yeah we're, so it's, it's one of the things that the market's adjusting and we're going to have to adapt you know as the aftermarket world right how, how are we going to keep up there are rumors though that there will be more onboard diagnostics 
as opposed to a separate scan tool. So what do you think about that? Is, is that what you're seeing? We, we may go there? I haven't seen that, but that may be a, a definite thing. Because think about the just the customer climate now. Anything customer-based is about convenience. Sure. So think about you have an aftermarket independent shop, not a dealership. So if they went to integrated diagnostics on board in the, in the vehicle, but maybe they had it to where it's all integrated, but you have to just pay their subscription. So now you don't need the tools, right. but you log in as a subscription to say BMW or to Mercedes or whoever, and then you get access to the onboard diagnostics. Right. Now that's that, that's a way for them to still capitalize on that. And you don't have to necessarily go through all the different tools. So that might be something that's coming down the line. I mean, it's really hard to say where they would go with it. I haven't seen a huge takeoff as far as going to onboard integrated diags. And even then, like look at Tesla, they have it on their screen. You can put it in service mode. Mm -hmm. You can fix most things right in the vehicle. But for service information, you're not going to find the service information in there. You know how we see the tools that they have, the service information integrated. Yeah. And uh, we're seeing a lot of scan tools have uh, wiring diagrams integrated, pinpoint test, guided file finding, and whatnot. Yeah. But we're not seeing Tesla do that with their screen. How ironic, right? Yeah. So maybe they'll get to that, maybe not. It's very possible. You know, Tesla's been a big advocate for just being trying to be innovative, right? They want to have something of their own. Sure. You know, their technology, their setup. So they may do something like that. They may even just change it all, all together. It's really hard to say because because Tesla has been pretty pretty ahead of the game as far as hey let let's try something new right to right. see how this works. You know they were one of the first ones that you know we we don't have dealership. We have test drive facilities and everyone just buys online. Like I actually went to one of their facilities when they first came out and went and test drove them and they're just like yeah you can go here and order it. Oh man, you know because you can't buy it here. You're just here to test drive. The which is cool. Age. Right? I know it's it's crazy, you know. You know the the market's always going to change. I think as the aftermarket world, you know, we're we're in the aftermarket repair industry. You guys are aftermarket, um, yeah. you know, independent shops. You know, we're, we're just going to have to kind of stay on top of it, stay on top of uh, where the market's going, and then try to make our best guesstimate, right? Like you made a prediction of, hey, we're probably going dynamic. You know, you got some pushback, but hey, it actually did. You know, and it could it could not have. We there's really no way to know. Right, you know, because you just it, have to find out with time. The, the test of time, yeah, is, is the true determining factor. So, well, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. Really. Thanks and for having me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Let's get back to, this to, nice. to seeing the, the rest of the scene here. Yeah, there's a lot to see. We'll see you guys on the other side. Alrighty.